Okay, so this is a pretty common problem for me, and it's probably a pretty common for a lot of other people, and that is the SDMA connector, this gold connector where your antenna screws on, on the video transmitter, gets broken off after a lot of crashes. Normally, I resolder it on here, and normally I have to add in extra bits of wire and stuff to dodge broken parts of the board, but I figured I'd have a go at directly soldering the antenna to the board. So the thing that makes this a bit harder than your average than your average solar job is these antennas, well these cables the antennas are based on, is actually a really special piece of cable. So a normal wire where there's two cables running parallel to each other, they generate interference to each other. So what these cables are is they're called coaxial cable because one, instead of two wires next to each other, one wire is a tube and the other wire is going through the tube, which is why you have these connectors with the outside and then the inside because this is the wire going through the tube and the outside is the outside of the tube. So it makes it hard to cut and solder because you've got wires inside other wires. So first thing is you can see this one after a couple of crashes on the weekend, the connector is loose on the board. You can see I've reinforced it with hot glue to try and make it a bit stronger but it didn't work. So first thing I'll do is crack all the, crack all the hot glue off it. I prefer to use hot glue for things like this than epoxy because the hot glue you can sort of peel it off and fix it up later whereas once the epoxy is on there it's a lot harder to undo. So after peeling the glue off you can see where my failure has been. This leg here has actually detached from the board. It's, oh, there you go. That leg is detached from the board. It's actually pulled the copper pad from the board. Like this piece stuck to here is actually the pad that you would solder to and there it's actually snapped it off the circuit board. So that's why my other one that's repaired is that little wire dodging this part that's been pulled off. So we're gonna have to work out how to jump the broken section and how to solder our antenna onto it. So I've just peeled the plastic off and you can see the damage we've got now. The corner of the board's actually snapped off. This pad is well, that's completely destroyed. You can see the coppers come off the fiberglass backing. So what I'm going to do now is just get the antenna that I'm going to use and remove the old heat shrink, heat shrink from it. After we pull the heat shrink off, we'll cut the end of the antenna. So we'll start stripping, start stripping that back. Instead of using wire strippers, it's probably easier to get a Stanley knife blade and wind it around roll it backwards and forwards and then cut the insulation this way like that. So now that's our outside wire that's the tube then we've got to get to the inside wire. You need to just work the blade through it over and over until you can start to peel it away. Outside's nice and peeled back now. Now we've got to strip the inside. We'll do the same thing. Put the put the blade on and then roll it to cut around to take that off and there's our two wires we've got the inside wire and we've got the outside wire you can see on the way these wired up we have to wire the inside wire to the middle and the outside tube wire to the outsides now if you look at this there's actually one two three four outside connections but we only need one so you can look at these legs, a part of this copper base, which is part of the whole side. So these are all connected to the same place because they're just the ground. So we have to connect our center one to this pin. And then our outside sheath, we can connect to any of the four around the outside. So as I explained before, we only need to join this middle one and then any of these four outside ones. So we can pick the best of the outside one and then the middle one, we have to make it work. Probably this side of the middle one's the best. We'll put some tin on it, put the soldering iron on there, hold it for a second, add the solder, and then once it's flowed, take it off. You don't want to hold it on there for too long, sort of messing around with it, otherwise you'll start to damage things on the board with excess heat. You can see there's a nice shiny blob. If the blob goes matte and not shiny, it's not a good joint and you should reflow it, try and get the old solder off and then try again. And as far as the outside pads, they're all pretty damaged, but there's material left just there, so we should be able to solder the outside of our antenna ground onto that portion of it. What I'm going to do is remove some of this 
extra of the outside of the wire because we don't need this much to actually attach to the board. So I'm actually going to cut it back with these, which is not the right tool for the job, but it'll get the job done just the same. So I've cut the braid back a fair bit. What I'm going to do is solder a small wire onto the braid that we can then attach to the video transmitter. We'll get some tin onto the braid. Let it flow through. We'll tin the center pin while we're here. This is the kind of wire you want. It's got lots of fine little strands in it which make it more resistant to vibration. You can see this is a cheap wire versus this wire I got from my ASC. You can see the difference in the amount of strands in it. This is going to be much more vibration resistant so it'll be a lot better for this. Okay so we've got our outer sheath tinned and our wire tinned. Should be able to put the two together. Just put some heat on there and they should melt and all attach nicely. So you see the solder go soft and flow. Take the heat away. And once it's cooled there's a nice shiny solid joint. Now that the joint's done I can cut this wire down a bit shorter and remove the insulation from it. Put it up to our video transmitter, work out where the wires are going to have to be. So it looks like pretty much just cut it flush with the end of the center pin. So I've got the video transmitter and the antenna in a little claw thing to hold it now. So we'll just put the joints together, heat the two joints up, add a little bit more solder just to make sure that it's all good. Let the heat flow through it and then take it away. So now that should be a nice shiny complete joint on that side to our remaining tab. Now we'll do the same on the other side. This can be a bit tricky because we melt the solder at this end, but you just got to sort of get a bit of practice and stick with it. Don't worry if it keeps unmelting itself, it's just practice. As you can see now, there's a nice shiny joint in there, and our antenna is now part of the video transmitter. So this works best with antennas that are nice and flexible because it can absorb the movement the most, and this one is not very flexible, so it's not great but hopefully it should stop me having the same issue of the antennas always breaking off. 